Two parallels can be placed against the face of the chuck. As long as your saw cut is true, your part should spin true. Just remember to take them out. Adjustable parallels can be used in a lot of ways, but we like to keep an inexpensive set around for setups like you see here. If you have no shoulder to seat against, one trick is to use a split sleeve that is slightly larger than the OD of your part as a shoulder. As you can see here, we place it against and the part can be removed and replaced and as long as the sleeve is slightly larger, it does not move. Another trick is to do a tailstock handoff for parts that are small enough to fit in the chuck. And this works great. Another trick is to clamp on the sandpaper and make a pass just like you would if you were going to be turning. A good amount of pressure can be applied so it actually works well even though the paper isn't kept moving. As you can see here, we're removing rough skin from 304 stock. This one doesn't require much explanation but you can actually use your mill as a lathe if you have no other option. This one's a classic. So we have a large drill and we're trying to go through thin sheet metal. The drill's actually spinning 80 RPM here in this video. It's just sped up for gravity. But as you can see, chatter can develop. What happens is, as the point goes through the material, it's no longer supported and you have a constantly developing cut that gets larger and larger. Cloth can be placed in between the flutes to help stabilize the drill. A bearing tool can be used to align a part. Simply snug the part, don't over tighten it, and apply pressure until it runs true. Remember to re-tighten the chuck fully when finished. Scrap metal banding can be used as a spring to retain your parallels. One way to protect threads is by using two split nuts. Another method is to wrap soft wire between each thread. The soft wire is damaged instead of the thread peaks. It's also a way to create springs if you use the right material. A bit of shim stock can create a chip shield. Another great way is to simply turn your tools upside down and throw your chips down into the bed. You can find the rough center of stock by balancing a scale. When it's parallel with the table, you should be very close. The same technique can be used on a lathe to find the center height of your insert. Calipers can be used like a height gauge as demonstrated here. All points should be equal on a quality caliper. The edges of shim stock can be smoothed out between two hard objects. We do a lot of different work here and cutting soft jaws gets expensive quick so here's a quick trick for facing the back side of the part. Ratcheting tap handles are great for tight spaces. If your saw cuts aren't true on the end, you can use a square against the face of the chuck. I don't know about you, but I don't like removing chuck jaws to put the center cap back in unless I have to. Here's a neat little trick for that. I don't know if it's luck or skill, but here we're balancing on a single parallel. Looks skookum to me. A lot of screwdriver handles will accept a wrench for some more torque. I miss Sears and Craftsman. If you have some light duty turning to do, a sleeve like you see here for holding a boring bar works great as a repeatable setup for turning parts. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe and we'll make more like it. 
This handy tool can replace a whole drawer full of transfer punches.